on a tennis court, Novak Djokovic's timing is perfect. But when he arrived in Australia to play the first Grand Slam for the year, holding documents allowed him to enter the country without COVID-19 vaccine. His timing hardly could have been worse. When Djokovic landed in Melbourne on Wednesday, he found himself in a city beset by surging virus cases. Border officials rejected Djokovic's documentation, cancelled his visa and ordered him out of the country in a move that many Australians cheered. The tennis star's outspoken opposition to the COVID-19 vaccine struck a wrong note in the city where 92% of the eligible population is fully vaccinated. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison quickly embraced the decision to deny him entry. This is raising questions about whether the world's top male tennis player and the reigning Australian Open champion was being made a scapegoat. Well, joining us live to discuss this issue is Biola Soles Chuku. She's a tennis reporter and correspondent. Thank you very much for joining us, Biola. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, um, so the, the question everybody's asking is, what exactly did Djokovic do wrong? Because um, many are saying, why was he even allowed entry into the country in the first instance? Uh, I think there's a whole lot of drama going on here. First off, um, Novak Djokovic is one of the very few unvaccinated players in the world at the moment. And it was required that players be vaccinated to participate at the Australian Open, except they are given medical exemption. And those medical exemptions come on the basis of having a um, serious medical issue or um, being after contracting COVID in the last six months. It is not known, it is known rather that Novak Djokovic is unvaccinated and does not accept vaccines. And no one knew for certain if he had COVID in the last six months. So I, I think, um, Novak Djokovic himself, Tennis Australia as well, could have been a little more um, transparent as to why he got medical exemption. And then Australians were naturally um, offended because they have faced a whole lot of restrictions since COVID came. And even spectators for the tournaments uh, are not uh, allowed into the um, courts if they aren't vaccinated. So I think the uproar was a little understandable and the not particularly need to speak but at the moment, um, a lot of people think he has won because he's, um, he's a, he has been told to stay for now. But tomorrow, the Australian government are saying they can still deport him. So the drama is far from over at the moment and he might still not be the Australian. Well, did you, many have said that um, the Djokovic issue has become some sort of political hot potato. And uh, <laughs> this has made a lot of countries, you know, um, somewhat get involved in this um one of the the biggest people who has been in the forefront of brexit um, nigel farage is actually behind djokovic and this is a person from a country where they are also trying as much as possible to make sure that all their people are truly vaccinated so are people caught between the love for the tennis game in itself and of course the love of their lives because uh, the love for staying healthy and alive could that be the situation of things now because of course politics has gotten involved yes that's definitely the situation of things because the australian government i don't think we really expected the citizens of australia to be that offended and they recently had elections and all and of course the government is trying to look good in their eyes and we have also seen some Novak Djokovic um, supporters in Australia take to the streets to show their support for him in front of the um, hotel that he was detained in as well. So yes, it's definitely a political issue. The reason why um, the Australian government said they might still um, deport him tomorrow is also a political issue. A lot of their politicians really came up to, to, to speak just after he was detained at the airport gate got into Australia. So it's more than just the tennis thing now. It's also political, definitely. And not just in Australia, all around the world. Hmm. And finally, um, I, I don't know how much of basketball you're into, but we saw a basketballer also, an American, uh, I think he plays for the Nets, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, that also had um, the same issue. He's like an anti-vaxxer and he was made to step aside and not play for a while until you know something broke within the teams and he was called back. Uh, what can other athletes, whether it be tennis, football, learn from this, especially for the anti-vaxxers who are openly saying they do not want to be vaccinated, yet they want to play the game? 
Yes, I think at this point, you really need to understand the rules. Rules are rules. For Novak Djokovic, for instance, I mean, almost every tournament now will require vaccination. So how long do you want to continue this drama? Or how many tournaments are you going to pull out of? And it applies to every sportsman, every sportswoman at, at this time. Vaccinations are required to play almost every sport in almost every country at this point. So if we go this route in every tournament, then we'll keep having this kind of issue. So I think everyone, spectators, sportsmen and women, officials need to understand that rules are rules at this time. And COVID is, it is taking over and we somehow need to curb it. And this is one of the ways to do so. So rules are rules and they need to stick by that way. I think that's what everyone is doing. Well, Biola Solis Chiku is a tennis correspondent and she's, of course, a sports analyst. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Miriam. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.